sequence, I'm going to familiarize you with the control panel for the uh, power base. And as you can see, we have uh, a number of buttons on the control panel. First you have the red stop button. Obviously you're going to use that to stop the all motion. Uh, when you're done winding the yarn, or if anything happens uh, and you want to immediately stop the unit, that will do it. You also have a jog button. A jog button is used when you first start to wind the ball. It'll start at a very slow speed, and you can control the speed of the jog with the up and down speed button. Yeah, there's only a certain range of control, however. Uh, the jog button is not intended to go very fast and uh, I'll demonstrate in a moment how you can interrupt uh, the turning of the spindle in any event with, with any of these uh, run or jog buttons uh, and it will not harm the machine or harm the uh, yarn. But in any event the jog button is simply there to allow you to start the ball and uh, after you get the ball started you would normally then tap the run button. Now if you're real familiar with the unit and everything's working fine uh, you could probably, after you uh, start your ball, you can go right to run. You don't need to run and jog for any specific period of time. But typically, you're best off starting your ball and then going to uh, in jog and then going to the run button. You can save whatever speed you have selected by simply tapping the save button. So if you're running in jog and you're happy with the uh, speed at which the the ball is winding during that specific uh, winding action. What you can do then in order to save that speed is simply tap the uh, save button. You'll notice when you do uh, tap the save button the power light flashes twice and that indicates that that setting has now been saved. That setting will be saved until such time that you turn off the power to the unit on the back panel or if you pull out the power cord. In other words, uh, even if I hit stop, you know, if I were to hit jog again, it would retain that speed. Otherwise, if you don't hit the save button, the unit will start in jog or run at its minimum speed for those two speed ranges. It will always default to the minimum uh, speed for those two settings. So typically what will happen is you will find a uh, speed that you like, let's say jog you like to speed up the jog, you're not comfortable with that lower speed, so you, you tend to speed it up. And um, what you can do at that point, if you like that speed, you then hit the save button, power light flashes twice, and that speed has now been saved. So if I hit the stop button, and then I hit jog again, let's say I'm going to start another ball or whatever, it will save that speed. I can reset that speed uh, without having to power off the unit if I want to do another reset simply by holding the, well first I would stop the motion. I can hold the stop button and then tap the run. And that will reset the minimum or the saved speed for jog, and if I did that during a run condition, uh, it, will, it, will, uh, it will reset the speed for run if I had previously saved another setting. So there's a way to reset the saved speeds by holding the stop button and then tap the run and that will erase any saved data. Let's say that I'm uh, starting my jog function, I'm getting the yarn started on the uh, spindle and then I decide to switch to run so I'm going at a higher speed but even that speed which is the default run speed and I'll show you how fast that is you know, so it's it's moving along there I apologize for not having zoomed out but just want to show you the relative speed so to increase speed you would simply tap 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 every time you tap the speed up or speed down button it increases by a certain percentage. So you just don't hold that speed button down, you have to tap it each time.
Now let's say I like that speed and I plan to do another 10 balls. Then what I would want to do is save that run speed so that I don't have to go through that speed up or speed down process on the very next ball that I plan to, to wind. Of course when I hit stop, you know, it comes to a, a stop condition, I would then start my next ball with jog and then once I hit run, it will go back up to that speed that I previously saved. So this save function is really valuable. You know, we don't have a dial like you're probably familiar with on some electrical products which has a rheostat or like a volume control, a speed control. This is a different process. We're using a DC gear motor and uh, we found that this is the most exact way to control speed by use of these incremental uh, speed increases and speed decreases. The fact that we can save those settings makes this extremely uh, useful and powerful. You know, you can save both the jog, the slower speed, as well as the run. You know, if anything ever happens, of course, you can tap the stop button, or you can do what I just did by hitting the jog button. Now, if you hit the jog button a second time, it goes in reverse, and I'll show you that. zoom out here a little bit. And what I'm going to do is simply tap that jog button a second time and you notice it goes in reverse. Now what you would do at that point is unwind your yarn carefully by hand as it's doing that and then hit the stop button. That would be useful if you ran into a problem which I'll demonstrate uh, in a later sequence here uh, of actually winding the yarn. Uh, but if you had a problem and you wanted to unwind the arm, that will enable you to do it because you can't literally turn the motor by hand. The motor uh, with the gear housing and so on will not allow you to do that. You'll notice that the green LED on the power indicator is lit whenever the unit is powered on. That's a reminder to you that there is power to the uh, circuit. Of course the unit's not turning at this point, but there's still power being applied to the circuit board. Typically a uh, shop owner or someone who plans to uh, use it you know at home or what have you would power their unit up and leave it up as long as they need to um, but at the end of the day you should really power it down. It's never good to leave power on a circuit you know unattended for a long period of time. Uh, first of all it consumes energy which nowadays is not a good thing but second of all it's uh, actually you know starting to wear out your electronics so you never want to do that so if you're done with the unit at the end of the day turn it off I do not recommend turning it on and off repeatedly just to save a little bit of power however if you're going to be using it over you know a few hour period then leave it on the entire period of time but at the end of the day then throw the power switch and the indicator light will go out so if you're a shop owner and at the end of the day you see that green light on and you know you're all headed home then I would shut the power down at that point you notice that this uh, control panel is very uh, smooth and sleek. You know, it's, it's essentially a plastic laminated circuit card of sorts. And uh, these switches are embedded into this, this, uh, this membrane, and that's why they call it a membrane switch. You can wipe that off if it gets soiled or what have you, but I would not apply liquids to it because, again, you're talking about electrical uh, circuit there. And, uh, but on the other hand, if it does get uh, dirty at all, you can certainly clean it off. The power base comes with uh, two specialized clamps and clamp blocks. As you can see, these are smaller versions of the ones that uh, come with the ball winder itself. However, you do still use the ones uh, that we packed with the ball winder. You're simply going to move them from where they originally were holding the ball winder to the table to holding the power base to the table. And you then use the small ones to hold the ball winder to the power base. Okay? The, uh, the bigger units are then used to hold the uh, power base to the table. Here you can see where the two bolts are used in the base and the slots uh, of the base of the power base. There are also uh, slots on the side of the power base as well as the other end. So we allow you to make these attachments uh, regardless of how you position your power base. Now are they really necessary? 
Are clamps of this size necessary to hold this unit to the table? Well, you're going to probably conclude that uh, they're not. Because the power base is very heavy, you know, relatively speaking, and especially when you put the, the ball winder on top. However, you've got a significant investment in this equipment, and the worst thing we would want to ever happen is for the unit to uh, fall on the floor. We have had uh, some users knock their ball winders on the floor when they didn't clamp them down, and uh, of course they could be repaired, but uh, now we're dealing with electronics and motors and we'd rather those not be knocked off the table. So we highly recommend that you clamp your power base to the table with the provided bolts and slots in the base, okay, so that you don't have any hazards uh, from things falling off. The unit itself will not really uh, need to be clamped. Uh, you'll find that in fact it's pretty stationary once it's it's running. But again, for, for the safety of uh, the equipment especially, we recommend that you clamp it down. I'm going to show you now the relative speed of the lowest jog speed setting and the lowest run speed setting. So that's the slowest speed that the jog will operate at. You can even stop the unit, nothing will happen. But if you're winding yarn on, as I will be doing shortly, this gives you an opportunity to actually hold it if you need to and allow the yarn to get wrapped around the center. You're always targeting in the center of the spindle there. If I go to the minimum run speed, that's the minimum run. So you can see the difference. That's the minimum jog. And also that works in reverse, as you can see. Same speed. Just tap it again to go back in the forward motion. And that's the minimum run speed. The jog speed setting can be increased, and I'll do so right now. I think there's 10 steps, and that would be the maximum jog speed. In other words, you would typically not be running a ball at that speed, but you could if it were a fine yarn or delicate yarn, and you didn't want to run too, too fast. You could certainly run it at that speed, and you can even save that speed, if you so desire, by hitting the save button so that if you do another ball it's already preset to that speed. The run speed, that again that's the minimum run speed as you can see that's starting to move along but it has a, a fairly high uh, maximum speed as we'll see in a moment. Now, are you ever going to run it at that speed? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe you'll find that uh, you can wind balls at that speed. But you know, there's a lot of things going on here. If your swift acts up and you have any kind of problems, <clears throat> you know, running at that speed will result in a you know clump of yarn being uh, accumulated very quickly, as it, you're going fairly quick there. Now, of course, I can stop it without even hurting myself. And it's not a problem for the machine because the the unit will automatically slip. The belt will automatically slip when we do that. I'll show you that belt sequence here. And you can see there's a pulley on the ball winder. But there's also a pulley down below. So when I intentionally stop the unit, you'll see the pulley down below is still turning and the belt is slipping. The pulley at the top has now stopped because we won't allow the uh, ball winder to turn anymore. When I release it, then both pulleys work. So that's an automatic slip system. It prevents any damage to the unit, to the motor specifically, and also to your yarn. So um, if you had a snag at the swift and all of a sudden it caused you to uh, stop dead in your tracks, which basically stops all motion of the spindle, this is what happens. The motor continues to turn, but the belt cannot turn any longer because it's slipping on the lower pulley. That's a real slick safety feature. It protects the equipment. It protects your yarn, 
and uh, protects you as well. The uh, guard should be in place at all, at all times when you're operating. And you simply pop it in there. There's two dials that will fit in holes in the uh, top of the power base. And once that's in place, you can't move it. So you can't get your clothing, your tie, your hair, little children's fingers or what have you. You cannot get caught if you have the guard in place. You have to have that guard in place while you're operating. I also do not recommend taking the guard off during rotation of the unit. Um, unless you're trying to examine some condition. But even then you've got to be extremely careful. Uh, you don't want anything falling down in there uh, or what have you. When you first get the unit, you'll have to attach the uh, the belt, the O-ring. And you simply fish it down inside and catch it around the lower pulley. And then you roll it up around that surface there. It may take a little time to practice that, but it's not something you're going to do very often. Uh, we do not anticipate that the belts will either break or stretch significantly, which would cause you a loss of... Uh, you know, traction here on driving the uh, the upper pulley on the ball winder. We do give you an extra belt with the unit simply as a safety precaution because we'd hate to see you have a problem and then not have a way to use the unit. But we do not anticipate that you will be going through these belts like you would with a vacuum cleaner, you know, which has a lot of other problems. You know, vacuum cleaners don't have that automatic slip mode that I just described a moment ago. And therefore they break their belts all the time this unit uh, will not typically break a belt. We've never broken a belt in all of our testing so we do not anticipate you'd have a problem. So in any event you simply put your belt down there, you get it caught on the lower pulley then you stretch it up and wrap it around this one. You shouldn't really have a problem in doing that. The uh, tensioning dial on the ball winder was added as a standard uh, item in May of uh, 2008 and we highly recommend it. In fact for use with the power base it's almost mandatory because if you have the uh, power base driving the ball winder you you really want to use the automatic tensioning uh, capabilities of this tensioning arm. Basically the way it works is you loosen this big black knob and then you can rotate this in any direction you want. In the normal condition, when we first started shipping ball winders, this was straight through. In fact, it might have been this way. Or this was straight towards the spindle. However, with this unit we find, if you turn the uh, dial slightly, the yarn comes in here and then exits there. And it just is enough uh, tension on there to take all the erratic behavior of the yarn as it's coming from the swift and control it and when it exits here as we'll see in some sequences it'll be in much better control. It'll be a straight line of yarn not vibrating, not shaking whereas the yarn coming from the Swift will be doing all kinds of funky things uh, because it's you know it's just erratic behavior as I call it coming out of the Swift. The Swift uh, because the yarn is wrapped irregularly around the Swift oftentimes it has a has some trouble getting free of the swift and free of the yarn that's on the swift and uh, because of that it acts up. But this tensioning head right here which you control by simply loosening the knob and then turning it to the to the level of tension that you want to get on the ball uh, really works wonders. So it's almost mandatory that you have that. If you have a ball winder from a prior shipment that doesn't have that then you really should buy the upgrade kit which is a very low cost item to uh, to bring that level of control to your ball winder. This shot here gives you a view of the uh, the location on the end of the power base where we make all our connections. So it's a uh, I.O. panel we call it. So let me go through each of the components. On the right side you have your on off button when it's with a straight up and down line that means it's on when it's uh, zero it's, it's off and uh, we put that to the side so it's not mixed in with these cables that, that we'll be plugging in here 
so you can get to it fairly easy with your fingers because you're oftentimes going to be reaching from the front of the unit just to uh, turn the power off at the end of the day or what have you. The middle uh, component, and it may your unit may have a different looking uh, connector than what you're seeing there, a jack rather, uh, but that's the power. That's where you're going to plug in your, your AC adapter. It goes in like that. The other two ports, the bottom one, which is very large, is uh, it'll look like an old style uh, headphone jack and that's what it is. We made that intentionally a different size so that you couldn't mix it up. But that'll be for your foot pedal. So if you buy the optional foot pedal you'll plug it in right there. And the top one is for a RS-485 communication jack which is a fancy way of saying that's how we're going to connect it to the uh, electronic yarn meter which is plan for later introduction this year and that's where you would make your connection for that so those are the only connections you need to make and of course you have these are your two uh, clamp bolt uh, slots there that we talked about earlier this is the bottom of the unit uh, normally there would be a, a serial number label attached right here and uh, that you should record and, and uh, register online once you get your unit so we have a way to notify you. We don't always know where these are sold because they're sold by some of our shops around the around the world so uh, when you get your unit then log back into our website under the PowerBase uh, webpage and it'll be a place for you to log in your registration, your serial number. You have four large vinyl feet that are non-marring and you notice you have four screws that are holding the base to the rest of the uh, power base. Uh, at some point, if you ever need to get in there, what's inside is a motor, and the motor will have to be replaced if you run the unit beyond 2,000 hours, let's say. Now, some people, could, it could take them a lifetime to run 2,000 hours. Others who run it all day long, eight hours a day, it might take uh, a year or a little bit over a year to, uh, to get to that point. The reason the motor has to be changed at some point is the motor has brushes and those brushes eventually will wear and it's like brake pads on your car at some point even though you love your brakes and they work really good at some point you have to change them out same thing with a motor of this type but it'll be fairly easy to do we'll have a video uh, sequence on the website that'll show people how to do it we'll be selling uh, relatively inexpensive motor replacement kits so that uh, the homeowner or the shop owner can easily replace their own motor and be back in business uh, and get another X number of years of use out of the unit. But when that time comes, you'll simply take those four screws out and you'll have access to the inside. You never want to touch any circuit boards in there or any of the wiring. Basically, uh, you're just going to, if you ever have to go in there and do anything with the motor, and again, we'll have instructions for that, uh, you're just going to take the motor out, put the new motor in, and, and uh, that's all you have to do. When you get your unit, it'll be packaged obviously uh, very well because we want to make sure it gets to you safely. So be careful when you open the box and make sure you remove all the different components that are inside. Some may be wrapped in uh, paper. But in any event, you have the power base unit itself. That's the way it comes. You have the two specialized clamps that clamp the ball winder to the power base. You'll have two uh, belts. I only show one pictured here. You have the guard that fits over the pulleys. And you have a power supply be packed in that box. That's rated at uh, 100 volts to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. So it can be used worldwide, has all the worldwide uh, safety agency approvals. And it has a conventional um, IEC cord, which is uh, for the U.S. It's got a three-prong three prong cord. So if you're in a foreign country, of course you'll have to make your own connection there uh, with a specialized plug on the end of that. But those are readily available, I'm sure, in your own uh, country. I want to show you uh, the uh, mounting connection point for mounting the ball winder onto the power base. You notice this peg, uh, 3 8 inch uh, peg coming up from the power base. That's going to be inserted 
or you're gonna you're gonna mount I should say the ball winder on top of that and this hole on the bottom of your ball winder will sit in there and that properly locates the unit uh, so that it's in the right position relative to your relative to your pulleys and your belt at the back if for some reason you have a serial number label on your ball winder in this area and it and it hides the hole then just sort of feel where that hole is with your finger and you can poke right through it some of the very early units of ball winders uh, had a very thin amount of wood in that area and uh, you cannot actually see the hole and we will provide instructions with the power base on how to locate that hole and uh, how, to, uh, how to penetrate that very thin layer of wood if there is still one there uh, in preparation for mounting it onto the power base. Of course if you have any issues or questions in doing that you can always give us a call and we'll be able to provide you instructions immediately right over the phone. So the proper sequence for assembling the unit would be to have your power base positioned such and the ball winder on top, try to make sure the, the margin of wood is the same on both sides, just approximately. Take your O-ring belt, position on the pulley underneath, roll it onto that pulley. Take your small clamps, Tighten them up. Do that on both sides. I'm not doing it here just because I don't have access to that side with the camera equipment. Position your guard. And uh, of course then you would connect your power supply and so on. But that's essentially how quick it is to uh, get the unit assembled. The same thing also holds true if you wanted to take it apart. Uh, let's say you had a power outage. You, know, you essentially your guard off, take the belt off, undo the clamp, lift the unit off. You, at that point you would put the handle back on the ball winder, clamp your ball winder to the table, and you're back in business from a manual standpoint. Pretty slick, huh? In this sequence we'll wind some yarn. I'm going to start in jog speed. I'm just setting up in the middle there. I can increase the speed if I want for the jog. And I'm going to switch over to run. Adjust my tension. Notice how the yarn is vibrating quite a bit on this side of the post. And on the other side it's pretty much under control. I'm going to increase the speed. I'm coming off a bobbin holder at this point, not a swift. I will set up a swift as well. Hopefully you can see the uh, vibration of the yarn on the feed side, or the supply side of yarn. And you can see by adding the tension via the tensioning um, post there, we keep it under pretty good control. Now I'll demonstrate if something were to happen at the swift or the cone holder or the bobbin holder by holding it. Now of course that tightens it up on the ball, but you'll notice that the motor's still turning, but the, uh, the spindle has stopped, and I can resume. You'll notice the yarn did not break because we stopped the motion of the ball winder from turning. As soon as it detected that there was a problem, the belt automatically slips on the pulley. Some of the older electric ball winders would have kept going like the Dickens and snapped that yarn or worse you know could have also done damage to the to the ball winder mechanism but in our case uh, we don't have a problem you know you can even stop it here and no problem right not that I would do that but you know if something were to happen there or if I stop the yarn there what it does of course it will put some immediate tension on the 
ball and you'll have some tightening there, but that would happen in any event. We could also slow it down to jog speed if we wanted to for some reason. If we thought there was something going on, we want to take a look at it. We're going to stop it. This ball seems to be properly formed. And we can start running again. There is a one second ramp up speed when you hit the run button, by the way. Um, it does not immediately go to the designated speed. It takes uh, upwards of one second to get to that speed which is a, another safety feature for protecting the motor and the gear system within the motor gear uh, housing as well as not snapping your yarn. Now I'm going to increase the speed on this. This table I'm using by the way is a folding table so it's a little shaky. Now it's going to come to the end of the yarn pretty soon. This is not a very big ball. You'll see what happens at that point. I'll get ready to turn it off, but if I went out here, that's what would happen. It would just continue to turn until you return to the unit. And there we go. There's our ball. I probably would like to make it a little bit tighter, in which case I would have adjusted the tensioning arm like this to make it even more at an angle. That would have increased the tension on the ball. But altogether, that, that ball's uh, fairly snug. At this point, I can transfer it to a yarn ball core. squeeze it down, but there's your ball. Here we'll be coming off with a uh, Swift. I'll start it up. Speed it up a little bit. Still on jog mode, make sure everything's working fine. Another run. You can see the vibration on the uh, yarn coming from the Swift. You notice <clears throat> after the tensioning guide, those vibrations and shaking of the yarn that you see here, very stable, which is a function of the, the tensioner. I'm going to speed it up at this point. I can also change the tension on the fly. Sometimes you might want to stop the unit, check the tension on the ball, and then resume winding. Once you get familiar with the, uh, how the tensioner works and where the typical tensioning setting is best, then you can let it run at that, at that uh, setting. This is only a one ounce uh, scan that we put on the Swift not a tremendous amount. But the purpose of this was to show you how the uh, ball winder will of course work with a the Swift. See how that yarn is vibrating which is typical coming off a of Swift. I'm not at the maximum speed uh, on this particular setting.
And there's the end of the uh, ball. The uh, power base and heavy duty ball winder combination are really what uh, electric ball winder should be. Uh, it's extremely sturdy, commercial grade, it's really heavy duty, it's going to last for a long, long time. Um, it's got a number of safety features built into it for both the user and the yarn and uh, also the unit itself. So we've tried to think ahead and make sure we put the necessary product, uh, protection features into it and also make it extremely robust. You know, there's a number of features uh, in that unit that allow you to, uh, well, to do just about anything you have to do in terms of making a, a, a bowling yarn. It will make a seven inch by seven inch ball and typically that's one pound or, or slightly more depending on how tight you uh, you make the ball. Uh, we also plan to to design a method by which we can connect a number of these together uh, on the same circuit so to speak, the same logic circuit so that uh, semi-industrial or, or semi-professional uh, users who want to wind a lot of yarn at the same time might be able to use that as a solution for for their application. So if you have any questions about the heavy duty ball winder or the power base please don't hesitate to contact us at 800-731-5648 or check our website. We will be posting more and more information about the unit as it starts to ship later in July 2008 and um, we hope that it uh, meets all of our needs as well as yours. Thank you very much.